Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be exploring some fun products that were sent to me by Paul Rubens. It's a company on Amazon and they make some really high quality paints. The really crazy thing was that I actually had this exact set of paints in my Amazon cart for weeks and then they reached out and said, hey, would you like to try these? So it was somewhat serendipitous and I am really excited to try them. I've already tested out the paints and created some color swatch charts here. This particular set is the glitter set of paint. It's 24 colors. And I'm also going to do this painting using the paper they sent me. I'm actually not sure if it's 100% cotton, but we'll just try it out and see how it goes. The photo I've selected to paint and do this tutorial from is a photo from Pixabay. It's a beautiful photo of a butterfly and it has a lot of color in it and a lot of potential to really use these glitter colors to the extreme. So let's just have fun with it and see how it goes. Now the advantage to creating a color chart or a swatch chart ahead of time is that you can really see what the paint looks like on the paper. Most of the time it looks quite a bit different than the colors look in the pan, usually a little lighter and not quite as dense. So that is gonna be so helpful when we choose colors for our painting. This book doesn't wanna stay open, so I'm actually gonna try this where I keep it open with the paints next to it, or we could use the box to keep it closed. I guess that works. They also sent me some washi tape, so let's try that to keep the book closed for us. There we go, that's better. Okay, now because butterflies are fairly complex as far as the markings, there's a lot of spots going on, and the shapes are pretty symmetrical, we are gonna wanna do a little pencil sketch before we get started with the paint. So I've just got a little mechanical pencil here with an eraser, and I've got my reference photo on the screen in front of me, and I'm going to do a little sketch first. It's helpful if you start with the head and thorax of the insect just to find the center point and to help you make the wings a little more symmetrical and even. So I'm creating this skinny oval shape with points on either end <laughs> representing the butterfly's body. This is going to be larger than life. And then the distance of each long top side of the wing is about the same actually as the length of the body itself. I find that a helpful measurement here. That might not be true in the case of every butterfly you do, but here I think it's pretty accurate. So I'm gonna find the little corners of the wingtips and make them about the same length as the length of the body. And then I'm going to find the center point where the top wing separates from the bottom wing. Comes right about there. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. The goal here is to try to make the wings as symmetrical as possible. This can be a little tricky, butterflies especially. And already I can tell that this wing, I've made it slightly larger than this one. So go ahead and correct as needed. And then I'm going to connect this line a little lower than the head, all the way across to the wing tip. And then the lower wings actually reach a little lower than the body itself. And you've got a distinctive little bump right here and another one right here before the lower wing comes up and touches the upper wing. This isn't going to be perfect. I'm sketching fairly quickly. My goal, of course, is to get it as symmetrical as possible, but if that doesn't happen, I'm not gonna stress too much about it. Now I'm gonna check and see how far apart this wing is from the body and try to make the other side exactly the same distance. And then we'll draw the distinctive little bumps there on the lower wing. I was looking back and forth between my drawing and the reference photo, trying to match it as closely as I can, and then make a long swooping line with a slight upward curve to draw the top wing. And I'm gonna make a slight correction to that one so that it's just a little more symmetrical. Not too bad for freehand sketching it. We'll go with that. It isn't perfect, but it's close enough. And erasers are so helpful in case you make little mistakes, it makes it much easier. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of fuzz or fur on the body. It's a furry little butterfly. The other important things you'll want to sketch on your butterfly, of course, will be the spots and any indications or markings to show where the colors change, such as the orange separating from the black. That's gonna be really important. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna sketch on is the black separating from the orange. There's sort of this brown or tan section of fuzzy wing feathers here. And then it separates into this black spot on the lower wing. And then I see three little segments that almost look like little toenails, something like that on the bottom of each wing. And then I see four sections right here. One, two, three, and then a fourth little bump. 
And the nice thing about that is that's also going to be where the wing veins are separating those shapes. So you can sketch those lightly on at this point if you'd like. And then again on this side, we see that same segmenting with three little bumps at the bottom and then four on the left side of the bottom wing. And then the little separation of the wings with the wing veins. All right, some important spots to indicate are going to be this one black spot in the center of each top wing, right about there, and also on the other side. And then a dark center spot that touches the top of the wing right here. And on the opposite side, try to make it the same distance from the center of the body as you did on the left side. And then you'll want to draw this black strip of color along the edge of the wing on the right side to match the left. And then a black spot to the right of your center spot, fairly wide. And then there's a little patch of white right there. Some tannish brown right on the long, along the top. A black spot here and here. They don't have to be perfect. Don't make them exactly like the photo if that stresses you out. Keep in mind that this is going to be an illustration and we're going to be using glitter paints. So let's not try to take it too seriously. And then I see two small dots, one here and one here. And we'll make that match on the other side. Drawing the wing vein in the middle can help to get your measurements right. The small dot is in the middle of this section and then right there. And then one more black spot at the top of the wing with a little bit of white separating it from that. And then if you want to get really detailed on the wings here, we also have tiny little spots that are a lavender or a light periwinkle color along the edge of each wing, little half moon shapes, sometimes circles, depending on what you're seeing in the reference photo. Now, as we go along and color or paint in this butterfly, it's going to be important to do your lightest values first. That way, when you add the black details over the top, it's not going to get smeared. It's important to do things in a certain order, considering that watercolor can be easily reactivated and sort of smear if you're not careful. So getting those lighter ones down will ensure that they're safely in place before we do the dark values. There, all right, I think I'm pretty happy with my sketch of the butterfly. Now, I was really attracted to this image because there's some lovely purple flowers in the background, and those I think we'll mostly do with just paint. It's not gonna be completely necessary to sketch those. But the last thing I need to sketch on the butterfly is the antenna creates this V shape. And I'm just gonna double check, but I think we're ready to start painting. Now you might be wondering, do I have any colors that are dark enough for the black? There is this flash purple over here that's quite dark and a silver black on the palette, these two right here, but they're not gonna be quite dark enough to make the butterfly look very realistic. So in that case, I am going to use a you guys are going to laugh at me. I'm going to use a waterproof multi-liner by Copic to do the black details. So in effect, this will be a watercolor and ink drawing or illustration. All right, so once you're all set with your water, your paints are ready to go. You've got a couple of watercolor brushes. Make sure you have some paper towel. We can go ahead and get started with the painting. Now I'm actually going to start with the background color. We're going to do some green in the background and those purple flowers. So we're going to start with some wet and wet. Let's see how this paper does responding to that. And guessing if it's only a percentage cotton and the rest is wood pulp, sometimes these combinations of cotton and wood can be pretty decent for wet and wet, but could also start to pill after enough layering or if you try to do any kind of extensive scrubbing or anything like that. So do be a little bit cautious when you're using a watercolor journal like this where the paper quality isn't going to withstand that kind of abuse. And try to paint everything in one or two layers at most for the sake of preserving the luminosity and the spontaneous look of an illustration and the quality of your paper. We're going to see how this goes with pre-wetting. I'm just using a size 6. This is a Trakel Protégé Plus round brush. These are the synthetic Kalinsky Sable brushes from Trakel. And I've just been testing out some new brushes lately to see how they work. This one holds a good amount of water and paint, and I'm really happy with it so far. All right, so I've got a glossy surface all around my butterfly. I'm going to start by dipping into this dark green metallic color. And that's this one right here on the color chart. It might be essential to kind of swirl your brush into the paint for a little bit to activate it and get the paint nice and juicy. 
and just to get enough on your brush. And we're going to drop that in around the butterfly, carefully painting right up to the wings. And the nice thing about wet and wet is that you get really soft edges. It's fun to see how the paint reacts and separates and responds to that. I'm just going to do a little bit of blotting with this one color in some areas around the lower wings, but not over the entire painting. Then I'm going to grab a different color. Let's do this fruit green. It's more of a lime green. Now something that you should probably know about glitter paints with just about any brand that you use is that they aren't going to be light fast. So it's not gonna be something you're going to want to frame and display, especially near a window, because the color will fade over time and sometimes quite quickly. So don't expect to use glitter paints and have the color last, but it is some, a wonderful thing to use if you enjoy watercolor journaling or if you like to create greeting cards or things like that. And the sparkly effect is just so much fun. Nothing quite like it. And I'm enjoying these paints very much. They're working quite well for this first layer. Beautiful colors, really natural looking greens, not too gaudy or vibrant. So I'm surrounding my butterfly with some of these green washes. I'm trying to alternate between these different greens, these three greens on my palette. And now it might be time to introduce some purples to suggest those purple flowers behind the butterfly. So I'm gonna take this symphony purple color and actually a little bit of the crepe myrtle too. And the combination of the two will make a nice vibrant purple suggesting these little flowers behind the butterfly. This is interesting because you can see here where the paper is still wet, the paint is exploding and blooming and softening. And then here where the paper is beginning to dry, it doesn't move as much. And that's actually a really lovely thing to have that loose, wet look right next to an, a wet and dry technique. I think it makes it much more interesting when you combine the two. Already my paper is drying pretty quickly, but it's responding well to wet and wet, so I'm happy with that. So we're just using a little circular blotting motion to suggest the purple flower around the butterfly. And then as I move away from the focal point, I'm adding more water in and allowing the paint to be even more loose, free, not so pointed and distinctive in my brush strokes. I'm rinsing and then blending that out so it just rather disappears. And then for a little bit of balance, I'm adding some of that crepe myrtle and symphony purple. Let's blot a little of it. Uh, right about here. That's a big puddle I just put down. So let's lift some of that water back out. And once you're happy with your background shapes, this is completely up to you how you want to design your background, but just have fun with it and enjoy the, the sparkle, the glitter effect that the paint is producing. It's a little bit hard to see under this light that this paint is actually sparkly, but when we're all done, I'll kind of tilt it and show you guys that sparkle effect. Now you'll notice even just by looking at my chart here, my color chart, that these colors really don't get that dark. So like I said, we're gonna have to use something a little different, I think, for the black on the butterfly. We'll use a pen for that at the end. But you might be wondering, okay, what color should we do next? Make sure that your edges are dry if you intend to touch those. I think those are pretty dry. So the next color I'm going to do is the yellow color in the wings of the butterfly. And I think for that, this deep interference yellow is probably the closest one to the reference photo. That's this fourth one here in my palette. So I'm wetting the paint and activating it, swirling my brush around to get a nice juicy amount of paint in the bristles. And then I'm gonna apply that between these two spots, here and here. Wherever I see it, the most vibrant yellow in the wings of the butterfly. And there's a little patch of that right here as well. And next to the black spot on the lower wing. Now I want this to kind of blend naturally and softly into the orange. So I'm gonna go grab my deep interference orange next, which is right next to that yellow we just used and paint it right up next to the yellow. You can allow the two colors to touch. Hopefully they'll blend softly next to each other. If they're still wet enough, that should happen naturally. 
And if you want to, you can even just paint right over those black spots since we're going to have to go over them with black pen anyway. And then painting that right up to the edge where this kind of tan brown color begins along the butterfly's body. Painting over the top of those spots for now because you really don't have to worry about preserving anything there of the paper. And it's just easier to paint over it than around it. It's just faster. Grabbing some more of that orange and let's do the lower wing right up next to the yellow. Loving these sparkles. So fun. If you want the color to look as vibrant as possible, make sure you're using more pigment than water. And if you have any excess water on your brush, always remove that on a paper towel and just be wary of controlling that. So you can see I'm always blotting on my paper towel down here. All right, so to create the effect of this tan color on the wing, I would think we actually have a color that's fairly close to that here. It's this royal gold. So let's use that and just paint that gold everywhere you see the tan in the reference photo. So all along the butterfly's body and along the top of the wing right here. I ended up with a little bit too much water in my brush, so I'm going to remove some of that on the paper towel and just dip back into the gold for a much more pure pigment. And I'm going to paint that all over the butterfly's body. This will be kind of a base tone. It's so sparkly. I'm not used to painting with glitter paint, but it's so fun. Having a blast with that. Right, so everywhere we see the tan along the top of the wing and right up to the other side. We'll just kind of paint that all as one shape, disregarding lines for now. And I'm actually going to use that color along the edges of the wings here too, right up to where the black starts. It's going to be so fun seeing how it comes together when we add the black at the end. Right now everything looks washed out and wispy and adding that pop of dark is just going to pull it all together in the end. You'll see watercolor tends to go through many different rather ugly phases, I should say. You just have to be persistent and keep painting through those. Trust the process, trust that it will come together. All right, I'm dipping back in that deep interference yellow again and applying that to the same spots we did initially on the other side where you see the brightest yellow in the reference photo, right between those black spots and along this black spot here. If you feel like you wanna go more vibrant on the other side, feel free to add a second coat. Remember that watercolor layers well, it's cumulative, it gets darker the more layers you add. So don't be afraid to go over a layer if you want it to look much more vibrant and potent in color. And you can even lay over the top of the orange if you want to allow for a little bit more blending. We're gonna take some of that and apply it to the lower wing over here, trying to balance it out. There's so much symmetry in butterflies' wings. And then we're gonna grab that interference orange and paint that on the opposite wing as well. Again, if you wanna go right over the top of those black spots, it makes it faster. There's really no advantage other than just speed to painting over the top of those. But I'm all about speed and efficiency here, so we're just gonna cover them up for now. Dip your brush in the water if the paint starts to dry on your brush and you're having a hard time with it laying down easily on the paper. And I'm gonna apply that to the lower wing, painting right up to our black markings. I'm trying to allow that to blend naturally with the yellow right next to it. And if you want to layer over the top of the other side again, you can. In fact, to make the orange even more vibrant, I'm gonna grab a little bit of this rose red. That's this one right here on the far right side of my glitter palette. I'm not gonna use a ton of this. I'm just gonna use it to kind of layer slightly darker over the top of the orange. It's gonna be subtle. But you notice in the reference photo, there are some sections of the wing that are brighter orange than others. And so to achieve that, you'll just need to layer a little bit of a reddish color, in this case I'm using the rose red, over the top. Looking pretty. I actually have a glitter brown on this palette right here. It's so interesting. Unexpected to see brown and glitter. But we're gonna grab some of that brown and start to paint that using sort of a furry technique, short, quick little brush strokes, moving in the direction of the fuzz that I see growing on our little butterfly. Painting over the top of the gold and starting to deepen those values and also add the texture. Try to let your brush miss areas so that we still see the underlying gold 
tannish tone underneath. But in the center of the body where it's significantly darker, let's just go ahead and cover that all with the brown. Oh, and I need to put a little more brown on this side of the wing. Like that. So that helped to darken the butterfly's body. Then the next color we're going to add is this periwinkle tone for the spots around the outer edges of the wings. And for that, I think I'm going to use, let's take a look here. This symphony blue is probably the warmer blue of these. These are so, somewhat greener from what I can tell. So let's try this fourth one on the palette here, the symphony blue. Make sure to get a generous amount swirled around on the palette so that your brush is coated. I'm going to paint in each spot. Now this is definitely a brighter blue than what I'm seeing in the reference photo, but that's okay. This is an illustration. We're having fun with these glitter colors. Make them brighter. Why not? As the paint starts to wear off, just reload your brush, grab a fresh amount of paint, and continue filling in those little circles that you so carefully drew on at the beginning. I also see little hints of blue in the body, so I'm going to paint those in. Layering glitter paints isn't quite a thing <laughs> compared to actually painting with regular watercolors which layer because they're transparent. Glitter paints, as you can see from my chart here, right over the top of the Sharpie, they are somewhat opaque and so layering isn't going to work as well. It's a shame that we can't use all of the colors on this palette. 24 is quite a lot of colors and I don't need to use all of them so I'm not going to. But if you guys decide to try this set and use all the colors, I'd love to see how you're using them to do your watercolor journaling and sketching. All right, we're gonna let that dry. And I think the next step is going to be adding our black markings to outline the butterfly and really make him pop. So let's set our glitter paints aside and it's already dry, it dried so fast. So at this point, we can already begin to start doing the black details. I'm gonna work left to right since I'm right-handed and I'm gonna tilt my hand over the top so that I'm not dragging it over the top of my work. And I'm gonna start with the outer edge. And in the reference photo, it almost looks stitched. It's not a pure black line all around. And that's because you have light color alternating with dark. So I'm creating this stitched look all around the edge. Little separations between my lines and trying to stay true to the little bumps and ridges that I see. And the black is layering quite well over the top of the glitter paint. I don't see any issue with that. Looking nice and opaque and dark. It will be important to have a waterproof pen when you're doing this. In case you decide to add other layers over the top, you don't want your black to get reactivated. That would be a mess. And so here along this edge, I'm doing that stitched effect with the black, alternating between black and nothing letting the paper shine through beneath. Along the top, I'm not going to give it a distinctive marking, but here I do see some little patterns of almost dots of black mixed in with that dark brown and tan color. So we're going to do little flicks or speckles along the top edge of the wings here. Just little dabbing motions with the pen. And then here where we have those distinctive blue spots, I'm going to outline that with my black. Let's just do the top left wing first right up to the orange, and then I'm going to go ahead and just fill it in black. Remember, this is an illustration. You could, I guess, add a few little white highlights if you wanted to, like what you see in the reference photo, but just to give it a nice strong sense of the shape of the wings and to really help those blue spots stand out, I'm just going to fill it all in really dark, just coloring it in solid. And then there's one little line separating the outer edge of the wing there. Again, sort of doing a stitching effect in there. I think that looks so cool. All right, let's color in the spot here at the top and add a wing vein here and here. Notice how I'm leaving this white little patch of color right there. And then I'm going to fill in this dark spot. Just color it all in. Pretty much solid. And then another big spot right here, right over the top of the paint. Here's your chance to clarify any edges that maybe were a little messy with your sketch and color that in. And then same with a smaller spot to the right of that one. I like to outline it first and then color. And we'll color in these three little spots here. No issue so far with doing the Copic pen over the top of the glitter. Seems to be working just fine. All right, let's color in this spot here. I'm gonna leave a little white streak indicating the wing vein separation. Try to make it subtle, but it's easy to do with a marker to leave those little separations. Same on this side. And you want it to appear as if this brown furry texture is overlapping those black spots. So allow your pen to kind of feather up in a way. 
to create that sense of overlap. And then let's darken and outline the butterfly's body. Add fur texture along the outer edge, especially towards the top, and then outline the eye. So I'm leaving a little highlight there and drawing in the antenna. I'm just gonna do a solid line for the antenna rather than adding those little white and black separations that you see in the reference photo. That's just a bit detailed. And then coloring in the body darker. Now here it's interesting, I'm having a little more difficulty overlapping this black marker over the top of the glitter. It's showing up underneath, but I'm not mad about it. I actually really am liking how this is looking, and it's just forcing me to apply more layers over the top to get it to the value or darkness that I want. So again, with all these details, continue to study your reference photo, use that for guidance, and add as little or as much detail as you wish. I love details, I just do. I'm so attracted to them. I tend to want to include all of them. It's one of my downfalls at times, but it also is just so beautiful and fun. And do what's fun for you. All right, now I'm adding that lower black strip of color surrounding the little blue circles on the bottom wing. If it's helpful to outline the whole shape ahead of time, you can do that. So here I'm just encircling each one of those little blue shapes and coloring in the black all around it. The wing veins are not real visible except for just a tiny little marking at the base of the wing there. So I'm adding that in and then once again, doing this kind of center line in the middle of this tan or gold section at the bottom of the wing. Wow, that looks so cool. It's starting to pop off the page really exciting. All right, so let's keep coloring. We're gonna do this the exact same way we did on the left side. I do want to mention that this set has been thoroughly reviewed by one of my favorite YouTubers. Her name is Kimberly Crick Art, and go follow her right now on YouTube. She's got a great channel. She thoroughly researches all of the sets that she buys and tests them in a window for light fastness for a year. And the Paul Rubin sets really stood up well to that test. Of course, the glitter sets do not because they're not light fast, but you're not generally going to use glitter watercolor for a wonderful work of art, so that's not a really big deal. But go check out Kimberly Crick. She has much more thorough information on these particular sets, and I can highly recommend because she does too. So if you guys were on the fence about buying these on Amazon, they're a great purchase and definitely worth the money. Wow, as you can see, it just looks so much better now that we've added the black. We can set our marker aside. And at this point, if you wanna add more color, I think I'm gonna add a little bit more of this deep interference green and maybe a little of the shiny blue just to introduce some more cool pops of green to the painting. Let's start with that deep interference green. This one is so pretty. And we're just gonna add tiny little washes of that here and there, little pops of color. Yeah, I think that helps a lot, I like that. All right, so let me show you guys up close. Hopefully you can see how shiny this is. It's hard to capture on video just how sparkly that is, but you guys, the glitter effect is really cool. So there's my finished butterfly using the Paul Rubens 24 color glitter set. This was so much fun to do. If you guys decide to try it, please tag me on Instagram at eolsonart and I'd love to see your work. Thank you to Paul Rubens for sending me this set and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.